horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. The market price for American beef cattle had reached an all-time low, causing a business depression in the Southwest, where all commerce centered around the raising and selling of cattle. Edward Grady, United States Territorial Commissioner in the Southwest, and the Lone Ranger, whose opinion he greatly respected, met in private to discuss the plight of the ranchers. Commissioner Grady said, Beef prices are so low that ranchers can't afford to ship their cattle to northern and eastern markets. If they did, they'd go broke. Well, if they don't sell their animals, they'll go broke anyway. Yeah, that's true. Commissioner, there was a drought in Mexico this past summer. The ranchers there lost steers by the thousands. Yes, they're clamoring for cattle down there. Our ranchers have cattle. They could sell them. Yes, but there's a law prohibiting the sale or transfer of cattle across the border. Well, if the people in this territory are to survive, that law must be repealed. And you have the influence to do it. You mean that? Yes. People here must sell cattle in order to live. People in Mexico need to buy cattle for the same reason. Converted to the masked man's point of view, the commissioner, acting quickly, talked to high government officials. And as a result was able to announce to the cattlemen of the Southwest... The government has lowered the trade barriers between this country and Mexico. Effective 30 days from today, cattle may be sold and transferred across the borderline that separates our two countries. There are certain specific requirements for trade, however. Buyer and seller will each need a special license for each transaction. This will ensure legal and orderly procedure. <laughs> Ranchers were jubilant as their hopes and business revived. But rancher Jack Morrow and cafe owner Pete Randall were happy for another reason. Partners in crime before coming to Hastings, they sat in Randall's cafe and discussed a plan. Jack, we'll make a fortune rustling cows and selling to those Mexicans. Hey, it's a good thing I bought that ranch when we came here, huh? Yeah, we wanted it as a cover-up for the boys and the gang. Now it'll be a cover-up for rustling. I'm not going to put any of the cattle we steal on the ranch, Pete. Eh? We'll hide them in the box canyon where we used to hide when we first came here. It has high cliffs on three sides. Yeah, that's a good place. We'll put a barricade with a gate across the only entrance. The high walls will keep the critters in. Say, 
Will you have Raleigh Meadows lead the gang on the ridge? Well, sure. I'm certainly not going to lead them myself. Raleigh's the only one to take charge. During the next two weeks, murdering outlaws raided cattle herds on the ranches and on the range near Hastings. The rustlers, all from the Circle M Ranch, were led by foreman Raleigh Meadows. All right, give it up! They shot down everyone who tried to resist their attacks, and in less than two weeks, succeeded in stealing a thousand head of cattle, which were moved to the Box Canyon over hard ground and through streams so no tracks could be followed. At the end of two weeks, Pete Randall said to Jack Morrow, You know, Jack, I think it's time to forget about any more raids. They're getting too dangerous. Yeah, Sheriff Niles has new deputies, and some of the ranchers are talking about starting a vigilante committee. If they start one, we'll be among the first to join. <laughs> Why are you frowning? Pete... I'm getting worried about something we didn't pay too much attention to at first. What's that? This license thing. Yeah. That's becoming a big item. Do you know that any time I sell cattle, whether it's one head or a hundred, I'll have to record my license number on the deal. The Mexican will have to do the same thing. Say, that could be bad, couldn't it? It is bad. The commissioner's office has a rough idea of how many cattle we own on the Circle M. If later on the records show we've sold a thousand more than we're supposed to own, well, the answer to who's rustling would be easy. Uh-huh. Well, don't worry, Jack. We'll find a way to get around that. Right now, let's get a line on prices. The Mexican buyers are starting to come to town. And if we're going to do things... Late that evening in the town of Hastings, Commissioner Grady sat in his office with Sheriff Tom Niles. They were checking names and figures on sheets of paper which covered the table. When an Indian entered, what? Commissioner well, Grady leaped to his feet and welcomed the Indian. Sardo, how good to see you again so soon. I thought you'd be heading north. Isn't that right, but we come back. Toto explained that he and the Lone Ranger had heard stories of the rustling and had returned to offer their help. Then, at Commissioner Grady's request, Toto brought the masked man to a secret meeting with Sheriff Niles and the commissioner. After discussing the rustling, the lawman said, I'm sure the rustlers live near here. All the rustling has taken place around Hastings. Are there many strangers in town? No. And none of the cowpokes around town have been acting the least bit suspicious. Nearly all of them have jobs on ranches now. Well, what about the ranchers themselves? We're not sure about them. They all know the Mexicans are prepared to buy all the cattle they can get. But one of the ranch owners may have decided to get rich quick by rustling. The question is, which rancher? What about the trading licenses, Commissioner? Can't they help you keep track of how many cattle are bought and sold? Mm -hmm. That was one of the ideas behind issuing them. The government wants statistics as well as fears. We were doing some checking along those lines this evening. Uh, See these papers here on the table? Yes. Well, they list every outfit in this section and the approximate number of cattle each has. I see. I had my deputies check on this list. They went out on the range and to the ranchers. Their check showed that no ranch has more beef than is listed. Well, if a thousand head of cattle has been stolen, someone must have a thousand head of cattle hidden somewhere. Mm, that's logical. We have the border covered, and no cattle have been taken across it. Hmm. Commissioner, is it true that cattle buyers are coming into Hastings daily? Yes, every day. When they cross the border, this is one of the first towns they come to. Some of them make immediate arrangements to have cattle shipped south when the trading starts two weeks from now. But there are others who just get price quotations and then go on to other towns. The rustlers must know that if they try to pass off the stolen cattle as their own, they're liable to be exposed. Ah. You mean having to give their trading license number and all that, huh? It would be hard for them to get away with selling a thousand more head than they're supposed to own. Well, that's my thought exactly. So if another crook came into the picture, a Mexican crook, say. Mm -hmm. A Mexican crook? Yes, one like old Pedro Almanez. Pedro Almanez. Never heard of him. Neither did I. Who is he? If you give me the word to go ahead, I'll be Pedro Almanez. Cattle thief, rustler, international swindler and smuggler, border runner. Anything you say. Mm. You mean you play the part of a Mexican crook? Yes, and hope that American rustlers will be drawn to Almanez by his reputation. It could happen, you know. Let's make it happen by all means. What do you want me to do? First, of course, I'll want clothes that'll make me look like a Mexican cattleman. Mm -hmm. That part's easy. I'll get you those. 
Uh, will he need money? I'll keep a record of expenses. Very well. You'll be reimbursed. Now, anything else? Commissioner, I'd like you to make a public announcement. If you'll say that you have word that a man who calls himself Pedro Almanez has slipped across the... The next morning, hastily printed bulletins appeared on the buildings in the town of Hastings. They were signed by Territorial Commissioner Grady, and they warned ranchers in the territory to transact no business with a man who called himself Pedro Almanez. By mid-afternoon, the name of the fictitious Mexican was on the lips of everyone in town. I was talking to the sheriff. He says Almanez sneaked across the border and wants to buy cattle even though he can't get a license to trade. I see he's been smuggling beef across the border for years and that no patrol's ever been able to catch him. A deputy told me he carries $50,000 in cash on him at all times. Smart, they say he is, and tough. Well, you better not try to do business with me. I'll hand him over to the law. No, I don't think he'll try to do business around here. He'd be foolish if he did, seeing how the law's after him. Jack Morrow, Pete Randall, and Raleigh Meadows sat in Randall's office at the rear of his cafe. Randall was talking. I never heard tell of Almanez. But then there's lots of Mexicans I never heard tell of. He must be a dangerous hombre when they put up signs like that about him. Yeah. Don't you think so, Pete? Yep. You know, it's too bad he didn't sneak into town without the law knowing it. If he's as clever as everyone says, and if he does business in cash, well, I'd just like to have done business with him, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Especially if he does business for cash. Well, let's forget about the Mexican. We have problems of our own. Raleigh, are your boys going to the canyon and change the brands on the cattle? Yeah, they'll take care of it tonight. Good. Now, Jack. Yeah? What we have to figure out is a way to start selling those beef without getting caught. We can make a few legitimate sales to start off, and nobody will be the wiser. But later on... A short distance up the street in the sheriff's office, the Lone Ranger, disguised as a dashing Mexican cattleman, prepared to leave Tonto, the sheriff, and Commissioner Grady. Well, perhaps nothing will happen, but I think this plan's worth trying. You're right, because as you said before, crooks have a habit of getting around to the cafes. If any of the rustling crowds around, they may become interested in you. <laughs> but some of the righteous citizens, if they believe the Boltons about Almanez... May want the sheriff to arrest me. Well, don't worry about that. I'll explain it isn't a wanted poster that's hanging on the buildings. I'll tell him it's just a warning. Uh, do you think it advisable for us to remain here? Yes, please. Tonto, you follow me and watch what happens. Uh -huh. That's probably the best. They might be scared off if they saw me or one of my deputies shouting here around. I'll go out this rear door then and start making around the cafes. Adios. Bye. 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 Within a short time, the nightlife in the cafes of Hastings had become electric. A Mexican, talkative and seemingly under the influence of tequila, was making a round of the places and making his presence known. Senores, those posters that warn you about Pedro Almanez, they're all lies. Lies, I say. <laughs> Poof, i show you what I think of those posters. See? I tear this poster off the wall. And I tear it in little pieces like this, see? <laughs> what about the sheriff, Almanaz? Aren't you afraid the sheriff may see you doing that? Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Amigo, I do not give two centavos for your sheriff or for any lawman. <laughs> Senores, if lawman could prove anything against me, I would not be here. But I am here. So it stands to reason I am smarter than they are, huh? <laughs> ah, but sure. So, who needs to buy cows? Not me. I have plenty to narrow. Instead of cows, I buy drinks for my Americano friends. Come, amigos, drink. Hey, you hear that, boy? She's going to buy drinks. Is that right, Alvin? Is that right? Hey, see, for everybody I buy drinks. Come to the bar and be the guest of these barcars. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Hal to continue. Word of Almanez and his lavish spending had preceded him to Pete Randall's cafe. By the time he arrived there, once more making a flamboyant entrance, Pete Randall was ready for him. The cafe owner opened his office door and peered into the well-filled room where men crowded around the bar where the Mexican held sway. Randall turned to Jack Morrow and Raleigh Meadows, who were glancing over his shoulder. Well, there is, boys. The hombre we were talking about and wish we could do business with. He sure doesn't act like a smart one. He's smart, all right, or the law wouldn't be so worried about him. Well, what do you say? You want to talk with him and feel him out about things? Yeah, what can we lose? Yeah, that's right. Raleigh, get out there and worm your way up to the bar beside him. Get his ear and try to work him away from the crowd. We'll watch from here and see how things work out. If you can get him interested, tell him to meet us at the end of Front Street, behind the blacksmith shop. All right, I'll try. See you in a little while. Just be careful now and smart. Whispered a few words to him, right? All right, Raleigh, we saw. Is he going to meet us like we suggested? Yeah, but he's smart, Pete, just like you said. He's going to stall a long while so nobody will get wise when he sneaks out. He said he'd meet us in an hour behind the blacksmith shop. Good. How will we proposition him, Pete? Just leave that to me. We'll play it smart and be ready for any move he makes. Outside, the man called Pedro Almanez suddenly drew back from the bar in Pete Randall's cafe and started toward the door. Ah, senors, I've had enough. I go. Adios, amigos. We meet again some other time. Hey, wait. What are you running off for? Because, senor, I've had enough here. <laughs> here is money. Five drinks for everyone. Tossing gold coins to the floor, the disguised Lone Ranger headed for the door. As he expected, some of the hangers-on in the cafe dived for the coins, while others waited for drinks. Alone, he hurried from the cafe, down the stairs and along the boardwalk. He saw Tonto waiting in the shadows and stopped. While pretending to brush his sombrero, he said, Tonto, tell Sheriff Niles and Commissioner Grady to find some way to hide in the blacksmith's shop on the corner and to meet someone there in an hour. Uh. Me tell him, Kimasabi. The Lone Ranger continued on his way. Fifty minutes later, as he walked to the rear of the building that housed the blacksmith's shop, he heard a voice speak from a half-open window. This is Commissioner Grady. We're in here. We'll be listening. Ten minutes after his arrival, three figures appeared from the underbrush nearby. Jack Morrow, Raleigh Meadows, and Pete Randall walked up to the man in Mexican dress. Yeah, you got here early, huh, Almanis? The early bird, they say, catches the worm, senor. <laughs> Except that I'm no worm. Almanis, let me introduce my friends, Jack and Pete. Without using last names, Raleigh Meadows introduced the leaders of the Rustler's gang. Uh, senor, we've heard a lot about you. <laughs> I assure you, Senor Jack, what you heard was not true. <laughs> I bet it isn't. Uh, why are you in Hastings? <laughs> you do not know, Senor. Everybody else seems to know. It tells on the bulletins everywhere why I'm here. I want. Well, you guess what I want. You don't have a license to trade, do you? If I did, I would not be sneaking behind blacksmith shops. Senors, let us not waste time. You either have what I want, or you have not. What is the answer? Well, that's putting it right on the line. How many is? How many head can you use? Well, how many can you show me? One hundred, two hundred, one thousand, two thousand. Yeah, he, he wants a lot of them. Will you pay cash for them? When I buy, I always pay cash. If I do not have the necessary sum on hand, I get the rest in a very short time. Uh, one thing more. If you were to buy a thousand or more steers, how would you get them over the border? Do not worry about that part. If I see they are the cattle I want, you deliver them to me at the river bank. That seems fair enough. Keep out of this, will you, Raleigh? Almanes, we do have some cattle to sell, and we're willing to sell them off the record. Know what I mean? Oh, senor, I know perfectly what you mean. But before I make an offer, I must see the animal. We'll show them to you. Yeah, but we'll blindfold you once we get you up on the hill. Blindfold me? Yes. You're not going to know where the place is where we have the beef, not until you pay for the critters. Oh, that's fair enough, senors. You may blindfold me. 
In your place, I would take the same precaution. Yeah, he's an all right hombre, huh? Never mind, Rolly. Just get the horses. I'm an edge. You get mounted and we'll take off for the hills. Soon after the three rustlers and the disguised Lone Ranger left, the door of the blacksmith shop opened, and Sheriff Niles emerged with Commissioner Grady and Toto. The sheriff said, Jack Morrow and Pete Randall. So they're the rustlers. Who's Raleigh? Morrow's foreman at the Circle M. We better hurry, or maybe we're not able to follow him. You and Commissioner Grady go after them, Toto. I'll swear in a posse. Leave a trail that we can follow. Uh Uh-huh. We take paper from shop, tear it in pieces, leave trail for you to follow. Get him up, Scout. Remaining unseen, Toto and Commissioner Grady followed the Lone Ranger and the rustlers through the moonlight. As they rode, the Indian dropped torn bits of paper on the ground behind him. After several hours of riding through hills over rough country and off all beaten paths, Toto and his companions saw the men stop and dismount at a narrow gap in an almost perpendicular wall. We stop here. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. That seems to be some kind of a canyon. Ah, maybe it widened out another side entrance. Maybe big space another side. Wait, I hear steers. Sound comes from beyond the gap. Ah, sound like them in pain. We dismount. Go on foot. Right, steady, Go Scout. Ahead. He gave them. At the narrow gap, which was less than 30 feet wide, Jack Morrow and Pete Randall talked with the disguised Lone Ranger. We'll take the blindfold off in a minute. Light the lantern, Jack. Yeah, that's just what I'm doing. Rolly, open the gate and go through the gap to the Box Canyon and tell the boys to stop branding those cars for a while. We're going to inspect them. All right, Pete. Hey, boys! It's me, Rolly! Here's a light, Pete. Yeah. Rolly went through the narrow gap to a vast area that was surrounded by high cliffs. It was here that the rustlers were branding the stolen cattle. At the narrow gap, Jack Morrow lifted the lantern. Uh, here, Pete, you'll see better with this. Untie that knot on Almanez's blindfold. Yes, you were. Let me take it off, Almanez. Very well. There you are. Now we'll take you to the cattle. We'll have to go through this narrow gap in single file. Pete, that, that handkerchief, the blindfold. What about it? Look at it. Speak with Brown. Yeah. How did... And look at his face. It's white where the blindfold was. We love Pete. He has brown stuff on his face. He's not a Mexican. Watch out, grab him! Give me that gun! Why, you dirty old... Pete! Grab that lantern! Oh, it fell, but it's still lit. Oh. Jack, turn him around. Let me get a good shot at him. I'm trying to do it. There you are. Oh, my arm. I'm shot. Here you are, Jack. Oh. Jim, sorry. Me fire just when I'm going to shoot. Nice shot, Toto. Let me take that gun. Oh. I'll take the lamp. Let me have gun. Toto, the Russians heard the shots. They're heading this way. And I have no gun. Can't be helped, Commissioner. Tie Morrow. We'll hold them off. That gap's narrow, and they'll have to come out through the gate. Hey, Pete! Jack! What's the matter? Who's shooting? Pete! Tell him everything's all right, or you'll get another bullet. Don't shoot again! Raleigh! It's all right! Nothing's wrong! Pete! What happened? Toto stood ready, and as Raleigh came through the gate and saw Pete, the Indian used his gun hey. as a club. Hey, Pete, you're bleeding! You're... Oh! Ah. Gun hit him right in the head. And now you'll have to use it for shooting again. Get ready, Toto. Ah. All right, Toto. Open fire. Chase them back into the gulch. Uh-huh. Tell them, Commissioner. Sure. This is Commissioner Grady. And the idea is that you're all under arrest. If you try to resist, we'll kill you. That's it. You don't have a chance. We know who you are and what you've done. Listen, Kimasabi. Riders come. It's the sheriff and his men. This way, Sheriff. Fire a gun. Let them know where we are. This way, Sheriff. You hear that, you rustlers? The sheriff's posse's here. We have your leaders arrested. You can't get out of there. If you don't want to be shot, you... Don't shoot, don't we give up! Oh, 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 oh. Here, we followed your trail. Are we in time? Yes, just keep riding and make prisoners of the men beyond the gap. This is a big night, Sheriff. <laughs> The next morning, with Jack Morrow, Pete Randall, Raleigh Meadows, and their gang under arrest, ranchers rode into the town of Hastings, reclaiming cattle which had been stolen from their ranches a week or two earlier. Sheriff Niles and Commissioner Grady watched them. 
The sheriff said, well, I wish the masked man was here to see how happy he's made all those ranchers. He wouldn't stay around when his job was done. Well, he should have been rewarded for what he did. That's what I thought. But he wouldn't take a cent over what he spent in the cafe. Uh, hey, boys, are you sure now that all of you have your own cattle again? Yeah, I sure have. Thanks for bringing them into town. Uh, he had the rustlers do that. He did? Who's he? The man who pretended to be Pedro Almanez. <laughs> when there wasn't any person named Almanez, it was a character he made up to catch the rustlers. And he caught them. Oh, well, yeah, but who's he? <laughs> well, he's also the one responsible for the repeal of the old law. To make it possible for you to trade with Mexico again and become prosperous. Huh? But you still haven't told us who he is. He's the reason you and everyone else in this territory has a future to look to. You ought to guess by now that he's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Mm-hmm.